Have you ever wondered how a simple breath fuels the incredible machine that is your body? Let's dive into the fascinating world of the respiratory system, the unsung hero of our bodies. It's like the world's most efficient delivery service. Think of it. With each breath, it transports vital oxygen to every cell in your body and then whisks away the waste product, carbon dioxide. Imagine the system as a bustling city. The sprawling network of highways and byways or the airways made up of the trachea, bronchi, and bronchioles. They guide the air on its journey like traffic controllers directing the hustle and bustle of vehicles. The lungs, these are the metropolises of our respiratory city. They are the hub where the real magic happens, where oxygen is picked up and carbon dioxide dropped off. But a city, even a respiratory one, cannot function without its workforce. Enter the respiratory muscles, the diaphragm, a dome-shaped muscle beneath your lungs, and the intercostal muscles, nestled between your ribs, are the unsung heroes, the tireless workers who keep the city running smoothly. With each breath you take, these muscles contract and expand, acting like bellows to pull air into the lungs and then push it back out. It's a delicate choreography, a dance perfected over thousands of years of evolution. And what's a city without its buildings? In our respiratory metropolis, the buildings are the alveoli, tiny air sacs in the lungs where the actual exchange of gases occurs. It's here that oxygen enters the bloodstream, hitching a ride on red blood cells to reach every corner of the body. From the moment of your first breath, this system has been working tirelessly, but how does it actually function? Well, stay tuned as we continue to unravel the mysteries of the breath of life and explore the journey of air through this incredible system. Imagine you're a molecule of oxygen entering the body through a breath. You're drawn in with the force of an inhale, carried on a gust of air through the mouth or nose. You then swoosh down the trachea, a tube-like highway that guides you towards the lungs. Here, the trachea branches out into smaller roads the bronchi, which further divide into even tinier pathways, the bronchioles. With each branching, you get closer and closer to your final destination. As you move along, you can feel the rhythm of the surrounding muscles. These are the diaphragm and intercostal muscles, the unsung heroes of the respiratory system. These muscles contract and relax in a rhythmic dance, causing the lungs to expand and contract. It's this motion that draws you in deeper into the lungs and then pushes you out again. But your journey, dear oxygen, isn't over yet. You've now reached the alveoli, tiny sacs at the end of the bronchioles. These alveoli are like little balloons expanding and contracting with each breath. But it's not just their shape that's special. These alveoli are surrounded by a network of tiny blood vessels or capillaries where the magic truly happens. As you float into the alveoli, you find yourself up close and personal with a red blood cell. This is the moment you've been waiting for. You bind to the hemoglobin in the red blood cell, a partnership that will carry you into the bloodstream, and so you've made it. From the breath of fresh air outside, through the maze of the respiratory system, to the tiny alveoli where you uh, hitch a ride on a red blood cell. And just like that, you've made it from the outside world into the bloodstream. But what happens next? Well, that's a story for another scene. For now, you're just a molecule of oxygen, embarking on a life-giving journey through the human body. Now that you're in the bloodstream, your journey is far from over. Let's take a closer look at how oxygen and carbon dioxide are transported in the blood. Now, you might be wondering, how does oxygen, a gas, travel in a liquid medium like blood? The answer is fascinating. The star player here is a molecule called hemoglobin found in red blood cells. Hemoglobin is like a high-tech, oxygen-carrying shuttle. It has a special affinity for oxygen, so when an oxygen molecule comes close, it binds to the hemoglobin. This oxygen-hemoglobin partnership is vital. It allows a vast amount of oxygen to be carried in the blood, ready to fuel the body's cells. But what about carbon dioxide, the waste product of cellular metabolism? Well, it doesn't want to be left out. Most of it gets converted into bicarbonate ions, a form that can be easily transported in the blood. The rest binds directly to hemoglobin, but at a different site than where oxygen binds. This ensures that the transport of these two gases doesn't interfere with each other. So picture this. As you travel through the bloodstream in a red blood cell, you're like a passenger on a busy express train. 
Oxygen molecules hop on at the lungs, clinging to hemoglobin for the ride. At the same time, carbon dioxide molecules are hopping off to be exhaled back out into the world. Every cell in the body is a stop on this transit system. At each stop, oxygen molecules disembark, delivered to the cells that need them. Meanwhile, carbon dioxide, the byproduct of the cell's energy production, boards the train ready to be carried away. This elegant and efficient transport system is happening right now inside you, ensuring that every cell in your body gets the oxygen it needs and that waste carbon dioxide is promptly removed. It's like a finely tuned orchestra, each part playing its role to sustain life. And just as smoothly as you entered, you're released back into the world, completing your journey. But who decides when and how deep you breathe? Let's dive into the control room of our respiratory system, the brainstem. This remarkable part of our brain is the maestro, orchestrating the rhythm and depth of our breaths. Our brainstem houses the respiratory centers, including the medulla, oblongata, and the pons. The medulla oblongata is the primary control center, setting the pace for our normal resting breathing. It sends signals down to the diaphragm and the intercostal muscles, instructing them when to contract and when to relax. The pons plays a supporting role, smoothing out the transitions between inhalation and exhalation. But how does the brainstem know what pace to set? Well, it has a little help from some feedback mechanisms. It's a bit like a, a thermostat regulating the, the temperature in your home. Specialized cells called chemoreceptors are scattered throughout our bodies. Some are located in the brainstem itself, while others are found in the arteries of our neck and chest. These chemoreceptors are like the brainstem spies. They keep tabs on the levels of oxygen and carbon dioxide in our blood. If carbon dioxide levels rise or oxygen levels drop, these chemoreceptors send an urgent message to the brainstem. The medulla oblongata responds by increasing the pace and depth of our breathing, ensuring we expel more carbon dioxide and take in more oxygen. But what about when we exercise? Well, during exercise, our muscles need more oxygen and produce more carbon dioxide. Our respiratory system needs to step up its game. Luckily, the brainstem is prepared. It receives signals from our limbs and joints, indicating that we're moving more. It then ramps up our breathing rate and depth to meet the increased demand. So every breath you take is a carefully orchestrated process, adjusting to your body's needs in real time. Our respiratory control room is always on duty, ensuring that we maintain the delicate balance of gases in our bodies. This is the wonder of our respiratory system, a marvel of nature working tirelessly breath by breath. So how do you keep this vital system running smoothly, you might ask? Well, let's dive into some strategies for maintaining healthy lungs and keeping your respiratory system in top-notch condition. Firstly, it's all about lifestyle choices. Avoiding harmful habits like smoking is crucial. Cigarette smoke damages lung tissue, making it harder for your lungs to function and increasing the risk of chronic lung diseases. So if you're a smoker, it's never too late to quit. Your lungs will thank you. Secondly, don't underestimate the power of good posture. Sitting and standing straight allows your lungs to fully expand when you breathe, enhancing gas exchange. And what about exercise? Regular aerobic exercises like jogging, swimming, or even brisk walking can strengthen your respiratory muscles, increase your lung capacity, and boost your overall lung health. But even with the best habits, you can still encounter respiratory issues. Asthma, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, pneumonia, and various respiratory infections are all too common. These conditions can make breathing difficult and disrupt the delicate balance of gas exchange. That's why it's essential to recognize symptoms early like persistent coughing, shortness of breath or wheezing, and seek medical advice. Early detection and proper management can make a big difference in your respiratory health. Now let's not forget about the world around us. Environmental factors such as air pollution and allergens can also impact our lungs. Minimizing exposure to these harmful substances, like wearing a mask on smoggy days or keeping your home free from dust and pet dander, can help maintain your respiratory health. Remember, the health of your respiratory system is not just about the lungs. It's a holistic approach, considering your overall lifestyle, your environment, and even the health of other organ systems. By taking care of your respiratory system, you ensure that every breath you take supports your body's incredible journey. 
So keep these tips in mind, and here's to breathing easy. Having explored the wonders of the respiratory system, you might be wondering what's next on our anatomical adventure. Well, brace yourself for a thrilling journey through the complex and fascinating world of the digestive system from the moment you take your first bite of food to the final stage of waste elimination, the digestive system plays a vital role in your body's survival and well-being. This intricate network, including the mouth, esophagus, stomach, and intestines, works tirelessly to break down food, absorb nutrients, and expel waste products. And believe it or not, organs like the liver and pancreas are also key players in this process. But, just like the respiratory system, the digestive system is not immune to problems. Conditions such as acid reflux, ulcers, and irritable bowel syndrome can disrupt its normal function. But don't worry, in our next episode, we'll delve into the strategies for maintaining a healthy digestive system from the foods you eat to the lifestyle habits you adopt. So, stay tuned for our journey into the digestive system where we'll uncover the secrets of this vital system and learn how to keep it running smoothly Remember, every system in your body plays a crucial part in your overall health, and understanding them is the first step towards a healthier, happier you. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and comment your thoughts below. Until next time, keep learning and stay curious.